Hey guys, before getting started with the video, I do want to mention that I am now working with an ATC dealer to help people choose the right ATC for them and pick the configurations and get everything set up. So if you are interested in that, please feel free to reach out to me. Hey guys, I made a video about my new ATC toy hauler a couple weeks ago. It was an introduction video, but now that we have owned the unit for a lot longer, I wanted to give you guys a new update. And um, I specifically want to focus on the fact that I am uh, working on building a relationship with a couple of ATC dealers to help uh, people navigate through the challenges of getting the ATC customized uh, ideally for purposes of uh, be, being mold resistant and working for mold avoiders. So if you would like to reach out to me, you can comment on this video or send me a private message if you are interested in uh, connecting with an ATC dealer that understands our needs and uh, is willing to work and give you some time and customize a unit. So last time I made the video, um, it was just basically an introduction to the ATC, and uh, this time I would like to tell you a little bit more of the details about our ATC, and I have to say that my wife and I, we have just absolutely loved uh, traveling in this ATC and using it for mold avoidance purposes. We are actually getting ready to do a trip uh, right now. We've, we've taken it on a number of trips, and so I'm just going to show you a few things, show you how it's set up. If you haven't watched the video yet on uh, my first video introduction to the ATC, you can look up my YouTube channel, uh, search YouTube for Brian Rosner, and you'll see my YouTube channel and you'll see that first video on the, on the ATC when we bought it about six weeks ago. So let's take a look around. When we first got our ATC, I unscrewed one of the speakers and examined the insulation in the attic because I know that ATC used to use craft paper backed insulation in the attic. In other words, actually a piece of paper lining the whole attic, which of course we do not want because that's a cellulose material that can get moldy. So I highly recommend if you're about to purchase an ATC, make sure you ask them. You can get the VIN number for the unit. You can call the manufacturer Manufacturer has been tremendously helpful when I've needed to call them and you can make sure that the unit that you're looking at purchasing Does not have the craft paper in the attic. Mine does not have it. I got kind of lucky I didn't know to ask that question ahead of time and I believe that besides that uh, There is no other cardboard cellulose or wood in the unit one thing I really love about our unit is that it has these blackout blinds that roll down and so uh, mold avoiders spend a lot of time in their RVs when they're traveling, um, probably do longer trips than normal people and so it's really nice to have the privacy when your lights are on so I really recommend these uh, privacy uh, blinds. One thing to be aware of with the ATC is that the underbelly construction is sort of a bare minimum. They are not enclosed underbellies, which I actually really love because there's less places for mold to hide. However, this also means that it's going to be colder in the wintertime. The tanks and the lines are going to be more expo exposed to cold, so you should familiarize yourself if you're going to be camping in cold weather with some basic winterization techniques. And if you are going to be stationary, learn to use RV skirting, which I will also try to make a video about the type and strategy that I like for that. One of the things I do want people to be aware of who are pursuing mold avoidance is that there are still ways to flood your RV and to have water problems. This is still something to be taken seriously, even though the ATC is much more mold resistant than RVs with wood. I have a podcast episode you can search your favorite podcast app for uh, Brian Rosner, B-R-Y-A-N-R-O-S-N-E-R, -E and the podcast episode uh, in my podcast, the, the title of my podcast is Mold Avoidance with Brian Rosner, but the episode is called How to Avoid Catastrophic RV Mistakes, 
And I highly recommend listening to that before you buy an RV and risk flooding it because RVs work a little bit differently than houses. And there are some things you have to learn about water pressure and what happens when tanks get full and things like that. There has been a lot of talk about how the stock tires that come on the ATC are unreliable and that they should be replaced. I do not have a lot of personal experience with this because ours is fairly new, but it is something to be mentioned and folks might decide to replace their tires. Now, of course, one of the best features of ATC is that the roof is a single piece of aluminum. It is not the typical white rubber membrane with plywood underneath it that most RVs have. It can be penetrated and punctured very easily and then the wood underneath gets rotten. So this is by far one of the best features of this RV. It is still prudent to do regular maintenance on the roof and make sure all the seals are intact and stay good and are resealed as needed. Our unit has the tankless on-demand hot water heater, which is sort of a fancy new feature. I do really like it. I don't think it is mandatory for people pursuing mold avoidance. Um, I wouldn't necessarily stress or focus on this feature as a mandatory option, but it is kind of a nice innovation. I like how ATC is always on the cutting edge and innovating. This would not be an ATC video without the appearance of our famous Cora, who gave us a tour of the last ATC. Hi. Hi, Cora. Okay, so this is one of my favorite features of the ATC, this solid step RV step, which we absolutely love. It actually makes contact with the ground on the bottom. If you've ever owned another RV, you will know that most RV steps are floating in the air. And when you walk up and down them, the whole RV bounces and you don't get that sense of security. Um, this one is fantastic. We just love the step. It feels very solid like you're stepping up almost into a real house. You can see over here in the Casita travel trailer that I own that I also really like, but it's smaller for less people. It has the other kind of step that is floating in the air. So if you have kids or people going in and out of the RV, it's going to be bouncing all over the place and not as secure. I very much love and appreciate the shower design in the ATC, that it is a one-piece insert. It does not have seams or connections or points where water could escape into the walls. It is a one-piece shower. I really like that. Of course, maybe the best part of the ATC, and you'll have to forgive it's a little bit dirty because we've been on some trips, is that the luxury vinyl carpeting, and I do say luxury because we love the way it feels, is removable. It, you can pull it out and roll it up and take it outside and hose it off or vacuum it or shake it out. And underneath the vinyl mats is just an aluminum sheet. It's an aluminum sheet. And on the other side, on the underbelly of the RV is the other side of the aluminum sheet and there is no enclosed underbelly, so there's nowhere where moisture or water can hide. As I said, that is also a disadvantage in winter time, but there are ways you can work around that to stay warm. You just have to love the fit and finish of the ATC. Very, very nice aluminum cabinets. Great smart TVs built in, ready to go with your Netflix and your accounts. There's two TVs in this one in the bedroom and out here. The kitchen is just absolutely luxurious and phenomenal. And you, you might be able to hear my dog playing in the background. Sorry about that. Um, just a great kitchen, well-appointed, large, lots of storage and all aluminum. Even inside the drawers, the construction of the drawers and cabinets are all aluminum. Everything is aluminum in this trailer. Probably the best thing about this trailer, and you can see ours is set up right now because we're traveling, um, is that it is large enough for a family. We already know, uh, pursuing mold avoidance, that there are a number of smaller trailer options, um, but there are not very many large ones. And so this one here, you can see there are these two uh, six foot couches, and then there's this happy jack bed that lifts up so you can have it out of the way during the day and down 
when you're sleeping on it at night. So there's quite a few sleeping options in addition to the main bedroom, which is also um, large and luxurious. And you guys can kind of see real life how it's set up. We've got a couple sleeping bags in here because we're camping in a colder area. So you've got this bedroom, plenty of cabinet space around here. And then you've got a dinette, which can convert into a bed, but we don't like to convert it into a bed because we want to be able to use it day and night and not have to convert back and forth. Um, you can sleep a person on here, person on here, the couches do fold out. And then of course, a, a nice large bed. I don't know what size it is. I might've said queen, it might only be a double bed, but it is uh, fairly large and comfortable. Our unit, of course, because it is a toy hauler, it has the back that opens up and folds down and all the furniture can easily be folded out of the way. So you could park a Jeep or quads or a motorcycle in here. Um, it's nice if you're in good weather, you can fold down the back and we have the option to um, have a screen, a back screen door here where you can open those large windows and let a lot of fresh air in. We really like that. One of the improvements on the ATC in general has been that they made the windows much larger, which is just absolutely fantastic. Ours came with two fans, these Max fans with a remote control, so you can get plenty of airflow. And another one in the bathroom, get plenty of airflow. Okay guys, so there is a little tour of my ATC. Um, now, there are a lot of other options and things that we can discuss in terms of what you might want or not want to get in your ATC. I'm not gonna try to squeeze them all into the video. But remember, as I said, I am going to form a relationship with a couple um, ATC dealers, sort of a business relationship where I can help people who are pursuing mold avoidance get set up with their ATC. So if you do have any questions or you are interested in buying one and you need help and you need guidance, uh, feel free to reach out to me, comment on this video and I can message you that way or uh, message me on Facebook or however you wanna get in touch. Um, I also have to put in a little bit of a disclaimer here that um, I have not had my ATC for more than a couple of months. And of course, I and the manufacturer and the dealer, we cannot certify or guarantee that it will never get moldy. Um, let me give you a little bit of a, of a pep talk or a lesson on that. Um, I have slept in the back of my truck with a metal camper shell and in the correct conditions, when the humidity is high, um, I have had mold grow on bare metal, not even painted, just bare aluminum. And sure, there was maybe some dust on there, or some conditions, but mold really can grow anywhere. It can grow uh, on plastic and adhesive, and it can grow in the cavities in the walls. Um, it's not a guarantee that you aren't gonna have mold. And I say this, it's a very important thing because I don't want people yelling at me or blaming me. Um, my personal feeling is that this is a very good purchase, a very good unit for mold avoidance because again, in my personal experience, wood is often the problem. Wood, cardboard, particle board, um, paper when you're talking about bad mold problems. So there is never a guarantee that you can buy a trailer or buy an object or buy a car and you're never gonna have mold problems. Um, but based on my own personal experience, I highly recommend the ATC. Um, I will try to make more videos in the future. If you guys are interested in this topic, feel free to reach out to me, get in touch. If you want a helping hand uh, and a partnership with a dealer that maybe understands our needs and is, has had some experience customizing these for um, mold avoidance purposes, and I'm trying to think of any last minute things to say. Uh, yeah, so far after spending a lot of time and doing a number of trips in our ATC, um, I very much recommend it. My wife and I are constantly commenting. We've, I've owned six RVs in the last three years and many of them have been moldy. So I, it's not like this is my first rodeo. Um, my wife and I are always commenting about how well done this is and how well it works for our unique purposes because um, mold avoidance purposes are different usually than the normal customer. So we're often commenting on how much we love it and how well it works. And it's very nice to have a comfortable, um, luxurious RV to spend your time in instead of, you know, just a metal trailer or something like that. So I really recommend these. Feel free to get in touch with me if you would like um, some more sort of one-on-one -on -one communication about our experience with it and if I can help you out um, in any way. Thanks a lot. Uh, again, just a disclaimer, 
I am not a certified RV expert. I am not a doctor. Um, there's no guarantees about ATCs not getting moldy. Um, I am offering to help people just as a as a layperson, investigative journalist, sharing my own experience and opinion. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you have a great day.